Access 2016 Module 4. This is part three. And we're going to be creating a report using the report wizard. We're also going to be modifying that report and adding some conditional formatting. So we're going to look at the basic layout that we're going to work with for this particular report. So we're going to have visit, first of all, owner information as our main and then visit pet information as our sub window. So it's the information about the visits that are going to be in the sub window. So it's similar to a form with a sub form in the way it looks on the layout. And you're going to see a lot of similarities when we are working with the wizard to when we did a similar form with a subform using the form wizard. So let's get back into our Riverview database. Again, for this to work properly, you do have to have your tables. They have to have the data populated in them. And you have to have the relationships built between the four tables. Those two tasks or those two things were done in modules one and two. You don't have to have all the queries that we did in module three. All right, so we're going to start out on our create tab and we are going to choose the report wizard. Now remember in module one, we did a simple report using this option. So before we do our new one, I'll just refresh your memory. This was our simple report using this report button. This time we're going to do the wizard. So the first thing we need to do is select the tables that we're going to be using and just like we did with our form with a subform you want to select the primary information first so if you look at your layout the owner information is primary the visit information is secondary so if you choose them in that order then a lot of the screens will default for you correctly. So we're going to choose the owner table and then we're going to add the following fields. So we're going to add the owner ID, the first name, the last name, the city, then we're going to go back and add the phone followed by the email. Next, we have to add the fields that are in the secondary area. So we're going to choose our visit table for that. And we're going to import all of or select all of the fields. So with this one, there's not a duplicated field, so we don't need to remove anything. If we did see a duplicate like we had on our form with a subform, we would have removed one. Now we're going to go to next. And notice because you entered the primary fields first, it put them at the top and formatted it the way we were hoping for. So we don't have to make any changes. Now it's asking if we want to add any additional levels of grouping. We are not going to be doing that, so we'll just click Next. And now they want us to define a sort for 
that second set of records, the secondary information or the visits. So for our visits, we want them to sort by visit date. And we want those to be in ascending order. So we're going to leave ascending. Now we'll choose next. And we have two questions that we have to answer here. First of all, a layout. We have three options, stepped, block, and outline. So we are going to choose outline. Then we also need to make sure we check whether or not we want it portrait or landscape in orientation. So we are going to leave it in portrait. We also want to adjust the field width so that all the fields will fit on a page. Then we're going to choose next. Now it wants us to give it a name. So this one's going to be owner, owners and visits. You want to be really careful when you're typing these names that you get them exact. If you had forgot to put the S on the end of owners, then it would not have found the form on your homework or the report, excuse me, and everything about the report would have been marked wrong. So you have to be very careful when you name these things. So we're going to click on finish since it's our only option. It opens us up into a page preview. If I want to see the entire report on one page, I can click on the zoom arrow and choose fit to window. And now you can see on one page all of the information. My scrolling arrows in a page preview move me between pages as opposed to between records. If you click the last page number, you can see how many pages it's going to take to print your entire report. All right, so let's look at our different views. The first view that we have is called a print preview, and that's where you are right now. If you set it to zoom and show to one uh, show fit to the window, you'll see the entire page on the screen. If you close the print preview when you come back in it later, it should maintain that format. So we're going to go ahead and close our print preview. And we're going to look at what our other options are. You can see the grid look again like we had in our forms when we were in design view. And if you look up on the ribbon, you also see that we have report design tools tabs. This time we have four of them. So the similar three to the form but then we also have one that does page setup options for printing. The other views that we have are layout view. This again allows us to make changes to the layout just like with the form. Notice we have report layout tools. And then finally we have report view, which allows us to view the form, but we cannot change it. So we can't change the data here, but we can view it. We're going to go back into layout view. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to assume that we wanted to change the theme for this object only to WISP. 
So I'm going to scroll down and find Wisp. I'm going to right click and apply the theme to this object only. Now, because themes are more than just colors, they're also fonts and sizes. You can see that when we changed the font with the theme, that some of the information is cut off. So we're going to make some changes to this form so that it's going to be more readable. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the title. Now if you were going to change the way the text reads, you do not need to resize the box because it will automatically resize when you type in the new change. So I'm going to say space, I'm going to make the and a lowercase, and add a space after the word and. So it reads owners and visits in a much more readable format. So when you hit enter and it saves that change, now you can see it automatically resized the box displaying the title so that it would all be visible. Now if I wanted to format the text the same way I did with the form, I could click on format and I could come in here with my title highlighted and I could say make it this darker black maybe I want to make it bold I can also add a logo just like we did so I'm going to go to the design tab and in my header and footer group I'm going to add a logo so again, I would locate my picture and add it. The difference between forms and reports here is that you do not have to remove the layout when you add a logo in a report. You can simply click on it when you see the cross with the arrows and move it over. You can also resize it and as you do that, it would simply enlarge the title or header box to make room for it. Now let's look at some other changes that we can make. So if you look at the date of the visit, you can see that the header is being cut off a little bit. We need to enlarge that field. We probably would want to enlarge the text fields as well to ensure that they were being fully displayed. If you see pound signs in a, num in a number field, it means it's too small and you're losing some of the data. You can see here that your animal ID is too large or is being cut off. So we would need to move some of these other fields so that we can get more room for animal ID. So what we're going to do is we're going to move office visit. If you want to move the data, or the heading and the text at the same time, you can simply highlight them both by pressing the shift key and then use your arrows to scoot them over. If I wanted to move just the title, you would select just that. And again, you can either drag with the mouse or use the arrow keys. And if you want to 
enlarge it, you need to get over one of the side borders and drag it larger so that the rest of the title is visible. For the reason diagnosis, I'm going to hold down the shift and I'm going to select both the field and the field label. I'm going to shrink the file size down just a little bit. And then I'm going to scoot it all over to the right. That will give me whoops, the ability to enlarge the animal ID label slightly so that it will be visible. When you're doing your SAM project, you want to make sure that you only make edits to the report that they instruct you to make. So if they don't tell you to do it, you should not do it. Another thing that we did with our other one with our forms as we added a label. So we're going to go ahead and save our changes. And now I'm going to switch to design view because it's easier to add our labels there. And in design view, I'm going to choose on the design tab, the button that when I hover over it, it says label. For some reason it's not wanting, there it is, there's text box, there's label. So you click on the button and you drag out the shape of your label. We're going to call this prepared by your name. And when you hit enter it finishes that text. So if I click somewhere else when I click back on it, it is highlighted. I can go over to Format. I can change the text here. I could say make it 20. In which case, I would want to make it larger. You want to make sure you don't get the cross with the arrows. That's going to move. You want to get the two arrows pointing in either direction to enlarge it. And we need to make it a little larger, so we're going to drag back this way. There we go. We could also bold. We could also change colors to this burnt dark red accent one. And that gives us a label. I'm going to save these changes and I'm going to go back to the Home tab and I'm going to switch to a Print Preview. So now you can see the header that has your title changed, the logo. You can see the data that has been resized and moved around so that you're not losing the data. And you can see your label. You would want to scroll through your report to make sure that none of the fields were being cut off so that you knew you were not losing any data with the report. So let's close our print preview and we're going to go back to our layout view. In the layout view, another thing that we can do is called conditional formatting. So we are going to go over here to our format tab and we want to make sure that the field that we have clicked on is the city. Our conditional rule that we are going to create has to do with the field city. So that is where you need to have clicked 
when you go up and choose conditional formatting. Notice when you get in conditional formatting, it shows you the rule that you are creating that, or this field that you are creating the rule for. If it does not say the correct field, you need to fix that before you go any further. So it needs to say city. And then we're going to create a new rule. So now we're going to put in our rule. So notice you can say that a field value is or an expression is. You can say what it is equal to or some other relationship and put in a var variables there for between, for example, or it's equal to. We're going to say that it is equal to. And we are going to type in Ralston, R-A-L-S-T-O-N. Once you do that, the next thing you want to do is tell it how to format the text differently. So we are going to click on the font arrow and we are going to choose the dark red color which is down in the standard colors. Then we're going to click on the bold. <coughs> Excuse me. You get a visual of what that reporting will look like. We're going to click OK and OK. And you can see here Ralston changed. Cody didn't. Let's go ahead and look at a print preview. So we're going to go to the Home tab and choose Print Preview as our view. And you can see that each time you see the city Ralston, it changed the color of that city so that it would stand out. I'm going to go ahead and close my print preview and so, now we're going to look at the print options first. So if I choose print, notice I can specify the page numbers, the printer, and the number of copies. So if you didn't want to see all of the pages of the report, you would not have to view all of them or print all of them. Let's go ahead and close our print preview. We're going to save our report and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close it. Notice when we created a form earlier with a subform, it saved as two different items in our navigation pane. However, when we created a report that was in a similar concept that it had owners and visits, it does only save it as one object. The owners and animals, if I open that up, you can see that has the main form plus the subform included on it. The subform is, however, saved separately as just the subform. The report, which is a similar concept, only saves as one item. That concludes creating our forms and reports using the wizard. So as a review, you would want to file, compact, and repair your database prior to submitting your SAM case.